A philosopher once said that marriage is something like two porcupines trying to survive a winter. <laughs> apparently, I've never seen it, but apparently when winter begins, porcupines suffer from the cold and need to huddle together for warmth. The problem, of course, is sometimes they get too close and begin to hurt each other, so they back off only to get cold again. The secret, the philosopher says, is for both porcupines and marriages is to find the right balance in a relationship, one that provides sufficient comfort with a minimum amount of pain. I'm not sure if the analogy is all that accurate or helpful, since I don't know anything about porcupines, but then I don't know anything about marriage from a practical point of view. But the readings, especially the first and third, do speak about marriage, or the gospel more precisely speaks about divorce. There's probably no one here who hasn't been touched by divorce, either directly or indirectly. You yourself may be divorced, your parents may be divorced, your children. I had one brother who was divorced. I went through the list, I think it's four nieces, a nephew, and I didn't even get to the cousins. <laughs> divorce is far too common and really far too painful. And the Pharisees wanted to see where Jesus stood on the issue. And they wanted to know what reasons he would give that would justify divorce. And then, as is often the case, Jesus doesn't answer the question. Instead, he took the occasion to talk about the permanence of marriage. Like many of the teachings of Jesus, we sometimes have difficulty in following them to the letter. We fall short of the ideal. When it comes to marriage and divorce, we need to keep two things in tension. One is the doctrinal or teaching issue, and the other a pastoral approach. On the one hand, we need to be sensitive and compassionate towards those who are divorced. But on the other hand, we need to be faithful to the teaching of the church that marriage is meant to be a permanent commitment. While it may be obvious to you, it's not obvious to a lot of people that divorce is a civil matter. It has no effect at all on one's standing in the church. A divorced person can still receive communion, can be a Eucharistic minister or a lector or involved in all the other ministries in a, in a parish. A problem does arise when a divorced person attempts to remarry without the benefit of an annulment. People have often said that when they get a divorce, whether it's real or unreal, they, and whether it's for very justifiable and understandable reasons, they can feel isolated and even rejected by others, even within a parish. A lot of myths surround the annulment process. Oh, it's only for the well-connected, or it costs thousands of dollars. Not true in either case. I think the stipend for an annulment in the Diocese of Fall River, for example, is $250. And it's been that way for about 40 years, as far as I can recall. Uh, and it's been the practice of Christ the King Parish from the very beginning to absorb that cost for anybody who wants to pursue the annulment process. As a parish and as individuals, we need to be sensitive to the special needs of one who is experiencing a divorce. It's a very, very painful time. We should reach out to them with compassion, understanding, love. It's not a time to condemn, but to sympathize. It's not a time to isolate, but to include. Like Jesus, however, we need to reassert the teaching that marriage is meant to be a permanent commitment. And as such, those of you who are married might see this gospel as an invitation 
for you to do all in your power to work on your marriage so that it does not deteriorate to the point that divorce becomes a preferred course of action. This year, over 45 couples came into the sanctuary and vowed themselves to each other for life. Four alone on this weekend. If statistics prove true, over 20 of them will likely divorce. How can this be avoided? Well, perhaps like the porcupine, they have to keep working at their relationship in order to find that proper balance. Today, in a special way, let's pray for all married couples, but especially those who are members of Christ the King Parish. May God bless them and give them the grace and the power of perseverance.